Hello everyone, RT Bear here, coming to you live from my studio, Hack Shack Studios, and uh, it's been a while. Like the title says, I'm back from hibernation, so uh, I'm going to try to do a show and uh, put it on all by my lonesome. So if there's anyone out there listening, um, please, in the chat, start chiming in. I would much appreciate that. Um, I have a few things lined up for you, mostly uh, artwork and kind of update you. <laughs> yeah, RT Bear awakes, yeah. Um, I'm here, I'm alive, guys. And uh, please, in the chat, chime in because uh, I'm all alone and it's going to get pretty boring in here. And I'm going to run out of things to talk about pretty darn quick. But this is going to be just a fast uh, little, you know, let you guys know. I'm here, I'm still alive, and uh, I'm still pumping away on your black and white comic book. I have some stuff to show you, like I said, and, um, and just kind of wanted to, you know, touch base, see how everybody's uh, doing, and uh, gosh, what else, what else? Yeah, it's been a pretty crazy, crazy trip so far um, for the last eight months or so with black and white and indigo on the indiegogo um campaign if you guys are checking this out for the first time um i'm rt bear 35 year comic book veteran i've worked for marvel and dc um both and sometimes both at the same time and on characters and books like spider-man ultimate x-men x-men uh ultimate spider-man uh batman uh, what did I, uh, Super Sun, Superman, Adventures of Superman, you name it, I've probably worked on it, and uh, I also jumped ship early on um, when uh, everybody abandoned Marvel Comics and went over to form a little company called Image, so that's kind of my resume, penciler, artist, writer, and uh, I have uh, Indiegogo, it's uh, closed out right now. Uh, the in demand in the campaign, but uh, for anybody out there that's backed the book, I just kind of wanted to update you guys on what's going on, let you know that I am still alive and kicking and still here working for you guys. So, uh, 35 years, that must mean you're like 900, right? Um, close to it. Sometimes I feel like 900, <laughs> but not today. But not today. Um, yeah, so, like I said, too, this is the first time I've ever uh, flown alone, rocking R.T. Bear. Uh, yeah, so this is all going to be fun. So let's see if I can BS my way through, you know, a half hour or so with you guys. And like I said earlier, um, please, in the chat, you're going to keep this thing alive and get me things to talk about. Um, any questions, anything like that, um, just let me know. The math, <laughs> I math real goods. Yeah, you do. And you speak very well, too, Durakin. Um, so, yeah, so uh, San Diego Comic-Con's over. So I'm sure everybody has talked to death about that. Um, no real good movies coming out uh, or out right now. So not much to talk about there. So I think mostly I'm just going to update you guys on what's going on here and uh, show you a few things that I've been working on. I had the webcam. I set the darn thing up. And uh, it was working earlier, but I couldn't get it to work through OBS. Also, like YouTube's changing their format. So uh, from what I remembered doing before and what's happening now, two different things. So um, you guys bear with me. So let me see if I can do this. Okay, I'm going over to OBS. So I have my artwork here. I was going to show you some of this stuff through the, uh, the webcam, but... Um, like I said, not working very well. Actually, it wasn't working at all. It was just black. I probably have the lens cap on it, Pro, you know, if it had a lens cap. So I'm in Photoshop. Hopefully you guys can see this. This is page 46 of black and white. And uh, I just did the, uh, the letter breakdown for this, the layout, and sent it out to the brilliant and talented uh, Jeff Eckleberry to do the lettering. Um, I was really proud of the layout. I actually should have got, I should, maybe I can find it. Uh, I won't push my luck, but uh, may, you know what? Let me push my luck. I'm going to go and I'm going to see if I can find it for you guys. You know what? If you're going to crash, crash big. Go down. 
go down big. Okay, where is this? Uh, do 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 do, do mockups, bump bump, layouts, page 46. This will be amazing, you guys, if this works out. 46, boom boom. Do 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 do. do. Aha! It worked out. All right, so let me go back and make sure that this is working. Oh yeah, it's working. So you guys can see this uh, Photoshop, I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. So that's page 46. Um, I don't know if you can, you can see what I just did though. I don't see it in the image. I see the original image. I don't see the new image. Does it take time to catch up? Let me see. I'm going back and forth here. Okay. I lost my chat too. Oh my gosh, what the heck is going on here? Dude, dude, there we are. Okay. All right. So, oh, there it is. Yeah, it's up now. Woohoo! Okay, so uh, this is the layout. So, this is what I put together. Um, all the red stuff is what I put together for Jeff. So, that's how he knows where to put the balloons and everything. And so, then we numbered them so they uh, coincide with the script. So the script would have like balloon number one and they would have the writing, balloon number two have the writing and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys already, you know, are familiar with this process. Um, I never, I never saw this stuff when I was working in the day because I never really worked closely with the letter or so. Um, I kind of made this stuff up, but I'm sure everybody works similarly. Um, so I just kind of put a uh, layout together so, you know, the, um, the letter will know where to put stuff. So that's page 46. So that's the page I was working on. Let me see if I can keep doing this. All right, so let's go back to the color version. So that's that's the color version. I also, I think there's some kind of delay I gotta get used to because what you're seeing and what I'm seeing is different timing. So bear with me guys, I'm a boomer. As they say, I'm a boomer. So here's the line art. Let me see if you guys are seeing this. Let's see how long it takes to go and change. So let me read the chat a little bit. Uh, you're gonna do. Uh, what are you gonna do after black and white? Oh, I have. Um, I have Chrono Mechanics, which I'm kind of teasing, but not going into too much detail right now. I have a Chrono Mechanics preview page. And you can go there and sign up, and everybody who signs up now uh, will get a um, get uh, exclusives. So you'll have the chance to get um, some of the cool exclusives that will only be available for the people that signed up um, now for the uh, for the Chrono Mechanics uh, Indiegogo. So uh, hope she's all right. Yeah, yeah, uh, Taylor's okay. She's doing okay. Um, she just uh, kind of wants to move out of this area of California. So um, it's rather expensive to live in California. So I think she wants to get out on her own and experience life, you know, that way. And uh, so she kind of wants to do that. So right now um, we're trying to figure out how to work everything and make it all work um, to keep getting you books, do YouTube channel, you know, um, you know, live streams and those type things. So um, we're probably not going to be working as close as we once were. But hopefully um, we will start or we will keep working together um, to what capacity. I don't really know. Um, but at this point, um, I talked to her a couple days ago and she's on for black and white, too. So you will get the same writing team on black and white, too, too as you do um, on black and white one, which is good because uh, she has a really killer voice um, and I like running um, my silly ideas. Um, buy her and get her input on things. So that's um, where that's at. Let me go back to Photoshop because uh, I want to keep this image because I am very proud of this image. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm really proud of that. Uh, so hopefully all the tech is working. You guys can hear me well and you can see all this stuff. I'm actually kind of getting prideful here. So you know what they say about pride. It's just it happens just before the fall, so 
Keep your fingers crossed. Hello, Art. I've missed you. Yeah, I've missed you too, P-Money. So uh, I'm back. I'm hoping, if this goes well, that I'll be able to uh, do a lot more of these things alone. I do have some shows planned for the future, and I have a lot of guest stars lined up. When I was uh, in San Diego, one of the things that was happening uh, was talking to a lot of talent, a lot of different people, and uh, they're all looking at us. They're all kind of keeping track of things and seeing what's going on. So a lot of them have uh, I've made uh, connections as far as uh, Indiegogo's and YouTube live streaming and things like that. So it's a little premature to talk about the shows and talk about the different people that I have lined up. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And um, I am really looking forward to it as I am looking forward to Black and White. So Black and White... Uh, like I said, if you guys don't know, it was um, up on Indiegogo. I, I think I closed out about a month or so ago and uh, to prepare for the final, the final countdown, which is uh, printing and then fulfillment. So uh, we're getting a lot of stuff printed up right now. We have the uh, patches. We have promos for the patches, the stitch patches, and they look dynamite. We had to kind of redesign some of it because it was a little too detailed. So um, get Walter Simonson. I have a Walter Simonson announcement uh, later. That's one of the things that uh, I will, um, you know, I will, I will lay down on you guys. Oh, Donnie. Donnie Thumb. He's here, thumb fist, yeah. Uh, so how many talked about me? You know what? Everybody, everybody talked about you, Donnie. Um, you are the uh, the champion of comics, man. People can't get enough of you and your soft puppet head. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, um, I'm, I'm having a great old time. There are some changes, you know, that are happening at the studio, and it's a little bit lonely here. At times, uh, I don't have uh, my partner here to run things by constantly, but uh, you know, a little bit of growing pains isn't bad, and so we'll have those experiences that we can bring back um, to the working relationship. And uh, I've known Taylor for a long, long time, so it's all good there. So I'm probably jumping around as far as uh, my stream of consciousness. Donnie's got me all, uh, all flustered here as well they should yeah as well they should he's he's quite a cutie that donnie that donnie he talks like this hey i'm donnie hey yeah yeah donnie some things that come out of that puppet's mouth is uh pretty pretty out there okay so let's get back to photoshop like like i said you guys i don't really have an agenda i was just kind of kind of wing it for you know 20 minutes a half hour and see so like i said any questions or any anything that you can think of in the chat will help this uh this party this train keep a rolling all right i have what is this okay i have um we've been doing a lot of lettering and a lot of uh layout so this is another layout this is actually page two and three this this page was a bear to figure out because uh one of the things that uh we were doing initially is we were kind of um, kind of trying to remaster the old. And then what ended up happening is, it, happening is a lot of the things just weren't connecting right and the story felt um, kind of stilted and weird because we were kind of locked into what had come before. So that's one of the things um, that we were very thankful. We, as in Taylor and I, were very thankful that we were able to not just fund but overfund so we could add pages to the book, which made it easier for things like this. So this is a little bit of a homage to the original page two and three, but it's quite different. And, um, and so I'm very proud of the way this page came out. And I'm very proud of the way the balloons came out. So this is a little bit of a work in progress. And I wasn't able to put the next two pages together. So you're going to get to see two and three, um, but separate. So this is the actual, I don't know if I can blow these up, if you can see them better, if I, if I blow them up. I'm not sure um, how much this is getting through to you guys. Uh, so this is uh, page two. So this is with the writing and everything in it. So um, you got to see the layout. 
So this is what it looks like all, all done. These are actually, there's some notes in here too. So this is not quite the finished version uh, with Jeff. So this has kind of got some of my edits in here. So if you look at the, um, the rumble here it's getting get ready to rumble so there's a there's an r that i added over here and an extra r here that's just to key jeff in that i wanted the sound effect to continue past uh uncle yee's head here so when he says uh i'm not sure he got cut off and then he's, he's reacting like what is that so he's reacting to the sound so i thought it would be it'd be more effective if the sound continued behind him so these are like little things that you tweak on the fly. Um, and this is also why these books take so long, because usually you have an editorial staff that does these things. Uh, but when you're working on these books alone, um, you got to do all these things yourself. So then here's page three, which connects to page two. And uh, I'm going to blow this up so you can kind of see um, how... I tweaked this up this morning. So the uh, the caption here with the robot speaking, you can see that uh, in Photoshop, I just cut the, the balloons out and changed the placement. And I also made them a lot bigger because I thought uh, they were small. And these are things that you guys, um, when you're creating, th these are things I really like though. They take time, but where you can just kind of plus ideas. So you get something back and then you, you're like, oh, well, that's cool, but what if we did this? Um, and then you just plus the idea. So Jeff, you know, laid all, you know, the balloon, the balloon, you know, he used the layout, but he put all these things in. But then I was like, these robots are really big. They're giant robots. So um, one of the things I did is I blew up the uh the word balloons here that the robots are speaking and so that's why it looks a little crude and rough because you can see the cutouts and stuff like that but uh it looked more i thought it was way more effective because these things are large scale you you kind of can tell here you know they're in the background but they're you know they're probably three or four times um the size of a human being so then this giant robots here in um, let me see if I can focus on I hope that all this Photoshop movement you guys can see too I don't see why you couldn't but just in case so where it says Gi giant robots that's that's another of me just messing around in Photoshop coming up with uh, trying to re redesign things uh, to make them more interesting and more readable and what Jeff did was pretty good but like I said this is kind of plussing because he did the giant straight across and then he did robot straight across and all the lettering was all similar in size and similar um, like on the same line. So I kind of skewed the the letters so they looked more organic and more um, visceral. Like he's just really reacting like gig, gig, giant robots, you know, uh, kind of thing. And so I redrew the balloon a little bit too um, just to, I guess, make it a little bit more designy. One of the things we're doing here um, just tonally is this is a fun action adventure uh, story this isn't really meant to be too serious uh, kind of I, I usually say it's a it's got a, a sensibility of like big trouble in little China so um, there's a lot of humor and there's just a lot of uh, silly things that happen non sequiturs things like that so um, so I guess some people would say maybe it's a little corny but I don't I don't care. It's what I like. So you can see the Yi run as well. You can see the old um, balloon where it was up on top here. And so um, I cut it and moved it down because it was tangenting the top of the robot shoulder. So I moved it down. So this is kind of how I communicate with Jeff, who's a brilliant letterer. He's, he works on the, um, oh my gosh, what is his name? It's the uh, Cry for Dawn. Um, gosh, that's horrible. I can't remember his name. He's a good friend and I can't, I can't believe I forgot his name. It'll come to me. I'm old. So yeah, so hopefully you guys are, are getting a kick out of this. I really like the rumble, the way it came across the page. And, uh, let me cut back to the original layout so you guys can kind of see what I did and then how Jeff plussed it and then how I'm plussing Jeff's idea. So this is the creative process. And like I said, it's absolutely my favorite thing is just working with people and then um, just running ideas back and forth.
So I hope I'm still entertaining you guys because this is a big concern. It's a big concern of mine. I'm going to go back um, to see what you guys are saying in the chat. Hopefully we're still going strong. Ooh, it's a lot of a lot of stuff in here. Okay, there's Donnie. I think that's where we left. Uh, no serial killers made contact with you, right? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, um, and even if they did, you know, I'm a badass and I can take care of myself. I'd put those guys down. Put them down. Uh, all by myself. <laughs> Don't want to be. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, once I get this, uh, the technical side of this stuff down, you guys are going to be seeing stuff and hearing stuff like that. Yes, definitely. Um, that song would would uh, fit this this stream so well. Art, do you regret remastering it? No, I don't re regret remastering it. I'm just so glad that you guys were, were very patient and allowing um, me the time to do it because this really is a labor of love, you guys. This is a 25-year dream that you guys, uh, I know I'm saying you guys a lot, but that you're helping me out with, and I, I so appreciate it. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell this story. Uh, I put this book out 25 years ago uh, through Image, so... Uh, the founder, the founders, the seven, they uh, they gave they gave me um, permission to do my own book. So I was kind of early on at Image as a supporting guy, you know, like a like a inker. I penciled some uh, covers for uh, Liefeld um, Extreme Studios, like um, what was their Superman called, uh, Supreme. So I did um, some some pencils and inks on different covers and things like that. So that was a blast. But then they came to me and said, do you want to do your own book? And I said, yeah. And they said, what do you have? And I said, black and white. Um, I kind of already had it chambered. And where it came from is uh, uh, in the 90s, you guys, it was crazy. We were like rock stars. And I had rock star money. And my wife and I used to go to estate auctions. So um, we were fortunate enough to be invited to the Bruce Lee estate auction uh, in the day. Like I said, this is probably 25 years ago. And uh, yeah, Lindsner, that's the name. Uh, I know I'm bouncing back and forth, but yeah, Joseph Lindsner. Um, thank you. And uh, so, yeah, we were there. And uh, I went there because I'm a big Green Hornet fan. Not just Green Hornet, but mainly the 66 or 67 uh, TV series with uh, Bruce Lee. And uh, so when I was a kid, I was probably four or five, maybe six when I saw those things, and they changed my life forever. The Batman TV series, as corny as it is, um, changed my life forever. I, um, I just fell in love with Batman, and then when I realized there were comics, um, I went crazy. I just went nuts, and the seed was planted. So then, uh, you know, when we got invited to the auction, and it was an estate auction, it was the family. So um, Bren, or Bruce Lee's wife was there, and... Uh, Bruce Lee's daughter was there. So um, Brandon, I think, had just passed away maybe the year prior. I think it was around that time. Um, so she was selling uh, like a lot of personal stuff, like really, really personal stuff, like his glasses. And, uh, and some of the high points were like the cat suit, the yellow cat suit that he wore. And uh, the reason I went is they had uh, Kato's Throwing Stars. Those uh, They're like hornets. Oh my gosh, they're so cool. They're like darts. But they have wings on them, like a, like an actual hornet, and they're green. And uh, he used to throw them and just like pin people's arms to the wall and stuff like that. Um, and so I went there for that. And I think, oh my gosh, just you guys, there was crazy money. I think in the uh, catalog they were they were going for eight hundred dollars. But I had, I'd never really been to an auction before, so I was thinking. Yeah, you know, an auction, how how bad's it going to be? You know, like $800, I can swing that. So, yeah, Art is streaming, hooray. And did you buy the Green Hornet car? You know what? I could have. I'll, I'll tell that story, too. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we're there, and uh, the Hornet, you know, throwing star shows up, you know, Kato's throwing star, and I'm like, uh, I guess it's called the Hornet Sting, or I forget what it's called. And so I was like, yeah, cool. So I have my little paddle, because they give you paddles with numbers on them. And so as soon as it goes up, I start to raise the paddle, and 
boom, boom, boom. It just blows through eight hundred dollars, right? It's it's like nine hundred. It's like a thousand. It's like eleven hundred. It's twelve hundred. It's I think it went for like thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars. And at that point, I was like, I'm willing to go maybe a hundred dollars more, like nine hundred dollars for this little you know throwing stinger or whatever it's called. But I can't justify you know any more than that so i kind of looked at my wife and she looked at me like "Eh, no it's not worth it i want you to have what you want but this isn't this isn't cool so yeah yeah linda and shannon lee yeah thank you god you guys are so awesome um this is actually working out um so uh yeah so there was that and and so on the way on the way home oh you know what i didn't already have black and white I had the go-ahead to do black and white from Image, but I didn't have the idea. So then driving home from L.A. or Hollywood or wherever the auction was with my wife, I just started thinking, like, um, wouldn't it be cool, like a, like a duo, like a, not, not a Batman and Robin, because I'm not really keen on the adult-child kind of relationship or duos because um, they have their own kind of problems, I think, inherently. Um, to make them work. Hey, Arthur Brown, the uncanny Kodak. Kodiak. Uh, Arthur and I have some plans that we will reveal and we'll drop on you guys soon too. Yeah, like I said, you get. I have a lot of things going on, so I I kid that I've been hibernating, but um, yeah, I've been hibernating with uh, with creating some cool stuff too, and uh, partnering with a lot of new people as well. So yeah, when we're driving home. You know, I was like, uh, Green Hornet and Cato team, that would be cool. And I was like, well, what if, and this is before, what was his name, uh, Smith, uh, Kevin Smith was like, yeah, make Cato a girl. This is like 25 years ago. And so I was like, well, what if the, you know, the karate expert was, was a girl? And, uh, and so um, they basically are, you know, black and white are the Green Hornet and Cato at, at their, at their core. But it goes, it went it goes way beyond that, but that was kind of it. So I always liked just like, um, like songs that would have black and white in it. I always liked the phrase black and white. And so then the, the tagline came to me right there when we were driving, when we were driving home and in a world where law and order often blurs to gray, justice can only be dot, 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 black and white. So their form of justice is black and white. So it also came out of my frustration with um, a lot of the gray area characters that were being created in comics. And not that I'm against gray area heroes. Um, It's just that there was a whole new generation of guys that came after Alan Moore and... um, and Frank Miller and guys that did it well, um, that were doing it really poorly. So these characters seem less and less heroic and more and more like, you know, almost villains. So then the black and white uh, came out of that idea. And then um, like black is more of a guy like by the book. Like he's seen so much in, in the life of being a spy that he kind of he got jaded with it and decided that he didn't want to live in that gray area world anymore because he didn't feel like he was doing any good so at his core he was really a straight shooter i know as corny as that sounds um and i wanted to create a character like that but i realized that even in the 90s if you just had a character that was too squeaky clean like that people would probably turn it off or say that he's a little corny or whatever. So then White was created to give that kind of yin to the yang. So she um, she's a little edgier. Uh, to her, the ends justify the means. To, to, to Black, to read Black, it, um, it doesn't. So doing bad for good causes doesn't work for him. Um, but sometimes it does for her. So they still live in, in a very gray world. They live in a real world. But the way they dispense justice is um, is trying to create a new form of justice, which is you know the black and white idea. So so that kind of came to me as we were driving back, and so um, went to work Monday. And then Rob's like, "You got a you know Rob Life feels like you got an idea," and I'm like, "Yeah, um, black and white." And <laughs> all I did was say the title. I guess go black and white. And so then Rob just goes, he "Goes I like it, just like the Jackson song. Let's do it." And so I was like, yeah, you know, enthusiasm is a good thing. So um, that was that was pretty much the origin of 
of black and white. So um, just to give the flip side why it didn't continue, because a year later we did do the, we had three issues in the can, uh, which is what you want ideally before you launch a series is to be three months in um, in advance, because also the distributor catalog, the diamond catalog, um, works three months in advance. So it's usually a good cushion to have three books in the drawer, as they used to say. Um, before you launch issue one that way if anything happens you're not going to get in a bind as far as releasing the next book hopefully that's kind of the idea and so i had done everything by the book and i was keeping track of the market but it was what was this now 95 96 and the market was crashing but it wasn't just crashing slowly every month man it was significant and so the year later that I inventoried, you know, the three issues and kind of came up with an overview for an ongoing, um, the market had kind of, it just wasn't there. And uh, so we put out the first issue and uh, it did great. God, I forget what numbers it did. I mean, by today's standards, it was it was still a crazy amount. But everybody that I was working with, all the vendors and even Image, they were taking such a big chunk and Diamond, they were taking such a big chunk of the money that I just couldn't keep it going. So we had just had uh, our little one, uh, Amanda. And so, you know, as a dad and a provider, I, I just kind of had to go, well, this Image thing isn't working. Black and white isn't working. Um, the cells just aren't there. Yes, I'll tell the story about the Black Beauty. <laughs> and uh, so um, I just had to go back to Marvel. So I, uh, my tail between my legs, uh, went back to Marvel, talked to Bob Harris, who is now editor-in-chief. He used to just be the X-Men uh, editor, but now he's running the whole show. So I ended up kissing a bunch of uh, booty for a year, working on every bad book that Marvel had until... Uh, which Kubert? It was Andy Kubert asked if I, I wanted to ink him on X-Men. So he saved my life. And so then I built back up my resume and my career after that. So smash cut 25 years later, long story short, um, you know, I'm putting this out through Indiegogo. And I got you guys' help. So I'm very, very thankful. And let me cut back because I just realized that this image that I'm showing you is not very cool image. Let me cut back to this one, um, which is a lot better to look at. So um, yeah, so the Black Beauty story is, uh, oh my gosh, like I said, you guys, in the day, in the 90s, there was some crazy money. And uh, I went to a convention and there was a fully restored Black Beauty um, from the Green Hornet TV series. In the 60s and um, excuse me so I um, I saw it and I started talking to the guy that owned it and the story is like he there were two made for the TV show there were others made just to show off at car shows and stuff like that but there were only two original cars and so one was for close-ups and one was kind of a stunt car and I think this was the stunt car so it was a little bit more a beat up and it wasn't you know as um, good with close-ups and stuff like that so I don't know how this guy did but he, you know a lot of these um, these movie studios they have like morgues they call them so they're they're like junkyards and they store like old stuff back there and so somehow I forget this guy's name now I I believe I I saw him at WonderCon well I saw the car at WonderCon and I think he still owns it so I think it's still the original guy. Um, and so he was in the uh, like graveyard, the 20th Century Fox graveyard, and he was just mulling around. I don't know if he was looking for that car specifically or what, but uh, he went and he was looking through stuff, and underneath a bunch of this garbage and stuff, he found like um, like the front corner of the car, the headlight. So they're very... Hey, Art. Hey, Ben. What's up? And uh, speed. <laughs> um, call it speed. And so, uh, yeah, so uh, he found the car. And so he wasn't really sure because he couldn't see the whole car. 
So all he could kind of see is that one corner with the headlight. And if you if you guys are old boomers like myself, uh, you'll know that the headlights flip flip around. So they're kind of black, and then at night they flip around and they have a green headlight um, to them. And in the 60s, that was the coolest thing in the world. And so he it wouldn't open right away. So he saw that there was something lodged in it. So then he kind of he kind of did a Fonzie on it and he hit it with the back of, you know, his his palm and the light flipped over and he's like, oh, my gosh, this is this is the Black Beauty, man. This is the car. And so um, he he kind of dusted it off, uncovered it, dusted it off. And he was going through the interior and he opened the glove box and the original ownership papers basically the pink slip was in the glove box so if you guys collect uh this is the best kind of uh, certificate of authenticity you could have to say that this is the the real deal so as far as a collectible probably the most killer collectible as far as i'm concerned you could have other than the actual 66 batmobile um was this and so he cleaned it up, uh, got it out of there. It didn't work, and it was kind of beat up. And uh, I believe it was used in a um, in a Quiet Riot video. I think uh, Mental Health or one of their. I'm not real familiar with uh, with Quiet Riot's music, but um, there's a video. And what they did is they cut out the back trunk, I think, so it had a gun, like a machine gun turret in it. And they kind of did that in the new movie, the one with uh, what's his name. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm blanking. The new one that most people hate. Um, I guess it came out a couple years ago. But anyway, it had that in there and and stuff like that. So this guy commissioned Dean Jeffries, who's the original designer and builder of the car. And Dean Jeffries painstakingly restored this car from like top to bottom. Um, undercarriage, everything, all the interiors, everything. So this thing was back to probably better than the original version was. And so, um, you know, back to the convention where I met this guy, I was talking to him. Um, he told me this whole story and I was like, wow. And then he said, um, I invested X amount of money, but you know, cause he could tell, yes, yeah, Seth Rogen. Thank you. Um, he could tell that I was really, I was really into this thing. And he said, um, my wife really, cause there's storage fees and there's all kinds of stuff. He, he said, um, I'm thinking of selling it. And he said, would you be interested in buying it? And I was like, uh yeah and so he told me the price and i was like i could swing that <laughs> it was several hundreds of thousands of dollars and i said i could swing that and so then i said let me think about it i walked around the con talking to my wife and she's like you know like unlike the hornet sting or whatever she was like if this is what you want man uh you should do it because she probably saw that i was very enthusiastic about it but then reality set in which i hate sometimes I just started thinking like, what would I do with this thing? You know, like I have a pretty big garage, but it would just stay in the garage. And what would I drive it around every Sunday or something? You know, what I end up having to do, like what this guy does is, you know, drive it to conventions and show it off. So I didn't really want the headache of like the responsibility of owning the Black Beauty because it is a responsibility. There were only two of them made. And uh, so I was like, no, nah, I can't do it. Uh, but man, I still look back and I think, oh man, that would have been sweet. Yeah, so that, that's my uh, Black Beauty story. So um, yeah, Seth Rogen. How many out there in the chat liked the Seth Rogen version of the, uh, of the Green Hornet? I kind of liked it in some ways, um, but they kind of made it into, a, I guess, a comedy action adventure. It would have been nice if Cato and the Seth Rogen Green Hornet taught him to fight hand to hand. Yeah, I think what they did is they made that into a joke so that they could get that gas gun into his hand. So they were trying to show that uh, Seth Rogen's Green Hornet wasn't very good at the hand to hand stuff. So he needed a gun that would fire farts at people. I think that was the line. So <laughs> some people think that was the line that they should not have crossed. So uh, it would have made things better for the characters in that version. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, there's there's a couple different ways that they could have played that movie, but I do believe um, 
this thing has been that Green Hornet movie was in development hell for years, like decades. Because I remember there was even a version of it that they were talking about uh, George Clooney, I think, as uh, Britt Reed, the Green Hornet. And um, oh no, was it? Yeah, there was one that way, but there was also like Eddie Murphy as um, Britt Reed, the Green Hornet. So. <laughs> Um, I definitely think the one with, you know, Eddie Murphy in it was going to be a comedy. So I think they probably tried to hedge their bet with the new version where it had comedic elements to it, but the action was pretty visceral and pretty aggressive, which it was. Um, but there were some things where they took it too far. I think I, I, I thought the, um, the, uh, the parachute on the, the bench seat of the car, I thought that was that was pretty darn silly. There was some stuff where they definitely pushed it to the point of being absurd. But I do believe that was the point. It was a risky it was a risky move, but some of the uh the action looked cool. Um I just like the way the uh the Green Hornet designs look and I like the way the car looks. Um, even the new version I thought was pretty cool. They lowered the suspension. They used the same, uh, what was it, an Imperial, a Chrysler Imperial. Um, but they used, um, I think they, they lowered the suspension and they got different mag wheels, like low profile tires and stuff. Um, so I thought it looked pretty darn cool. Uh, so let me see, what else? Man, I think I killed a half hour here, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Never seen, oh, uh, on Kodi uh, the Uncanny Kodiak says, uh, never seen it. I heard of it. Um, uh, it was a snore fest. Never seen it. I heard it. Oh, I heard it was a snore fest. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know about a snore fest. I think it was weird. Um, some of the, the comedy and some of, like I said, it was pretty broad, the comedy. But some of the action scenes I thought were pretty cool um, with the car. The car got shot the hell up. Man, that car was like definitely a hero's car. Uh, Alec Baldwin's shadow was better. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I wish that thing would have got a little bit of a better um, better promotion and stuff like that. I don't know how well it did in the box office, but uh, um, I thought it was pretty cool. I always liked the shadow idea. I thought it was pretty cool as a concept. Uh, I had some good parts, but it didn't work for me. Yeah, yeah, it didn't work for me as well. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so, oh, I got an Alec Baldwin story, too. Um, when we were pitching Black and White, we, we were signed in the day um, to, uh, what is it, um, William Morris? Philip Morris is the tobacco company. So William Morris, yeah, the, um, the Hollywood agency. So in the day, because Black and White did so well, man, it did crazy well. The numbers were good to uh, get some Hollywood uh, attention. So we were taking meetings and uh, I think it was live entertainment. I I believe live live entertainment came out of uh, Carolco, which was James Cameron's company. And I think it kind of busted up when he got in a divorce with his one of his wives. So um, the company was kind of in disarray. But I think what was coming out of it was a company called Live Entertainment. And so we had a meeting with them, my wife and I and our agent, and. Uh, they were they were in uh, like William Morris represents a bunch of people. So they represent like screenwriters, uh, creatives, like IP people like myself, um, actors, directors, producers, like all kinds of different people. And they can put packages together. So one of the things that they were putting together was possibly Alec Baldwin and uh, God, what was his wife at the time's name? Kim Basinger. Uh, as black and white and uh, if you look at white's hair in the early stuff she's kind of got the Kim Basinger kind of uh, sweep over and that long long hair um, like she did in uh, in the first Batman so uh, she wasn't uh, she wasn't half Chinese but uh, you know Hollywood has changed uh, things like that before so I thought it was kind of a cool idea and I think uh, Alec Baldwin's still one of the best actors that Hollywood has. So yeah, William Morris is correct. Yeah, I always want to say Philip Morris. Those guys, that would not be right. Um, yeah, let me see what else I have uh, in Photoshop. I think I have some other stuff. Oh, let me see what this is. This is probably something really bad. Oh, 
So I showed that, so that's um, the layout as far as the balloon placement. So let's find this. Yeah, so this is cool, you guys. Um, let me cut back and see if you can see this. There's a bit of delay, so I'm still trying to... Uh, yeah, shwing! <laughs> yeah, the Wayne's World thing. Um, she could get him to kill. Wasn't that the thing in Wayne's World 2 where uh, Kim Basinger was trying to get Garth to kill uh, her ex or something like that? Yeah, I probably would have, you know, to be with Kim Basinger. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, you guys, this is the back cover. So this is still kind of a work in progress. So we're still playing with some of the fonts. But this will be the back cover of the graphic novel. It's the 54-page black and white graphic novel. Um, and uh, I'm so darn proud of it. You can see the Hack Shack logo in the lower right-hand corner. Um, so some of the wording were still like the parting shot, you know, the one of... Uh, two books um, in the series and stuff like that. So some of the wording we're still working and trying to uh, see if we can do better. Like I said, you know, always plusing, always looking for ways to plus. Um, it takes time, especially since this is kind of a one-man operation. Uh, Taylor um, helps out quite a bit, but it's still kind of, you know, all comes from this guy here. Um, but yeah, it's going to be square bound. It's going to be a beautiful book. We have two different publishers or printers that we're talking to, uh, Global PSD, um, Stephen, which is, uh, I want to work with this guy um, so bad. He's such a nice guy, and uh, he makes it so easy for me um, as far as just answering questions, things like that. So he uh that's a chinese um, printing company but it's run by um americans and uh and so what he has is um oh this these are books that they do so if you've ever seen like uh j scott campbell's art book the hardbound uh the hardback books and the uh i think the humberto ramos books and uh the art adams books they, they print a lot of different books, but they do a great job, like an amazing, amazing good job. So these are going to be like square bound books. So these aren't going to be saddle stitch stapled books. Um, as one of the uh, stretch goals that we met, thanks to you guys, um, we were able to square bound it and it's going to have like a card. It's going to have a cardboard cover on it and it's just going to look dynamite. It's going to look so amazing. So uh yeah, you guys, here's a here's a sneak peek at the back cover. Like I said, this isn't going to be the actual finished version, but this is going to be it. So, um, well, this is going to be the design anyway. So, um, yeah, let me uh, cut back to the chat because uh, I think this is all the stuff I had prepared, you guys. Um, you guys have made this very, very uh, easy for me in the chat. So I really do appreciate it. Um, had a blast i will be doing this soon since now i hope when i review this that everything's working good and that uh, the volume here and the mic is good and i did have i had some stuff on my drawing board that i wanted to show you um some pencils and inks that i've been working on so i have three pages left to finish so one of them is at the colorist now. One of them is on my drawing board. I just have to basically um, kind of do the art corrections and some of the special effects with white paint and then scan it. And then what I do is I go in digitally and kind of augment things a little bit and clean up some lines and maybe add some special effects uh, in Photoshop. So I have that. And then the last page, I'll be starting. Oh, it's already 8 o'clock. It's almost 8 o'clock. I was going to say I'm going to start tonight. So um, I'll be starting that tomorrow morning will be the last page, you guys. It's already laid out. It's fairly tight. And uh, Taylor and I had a little bit of time. She came by today. And we had a little bit of time to go over some of the dialogue. So the dialogue is looking sharp on that page as well. So really, you guys one page away from completing the art on this book and the dialogue and um, getting it all done so it's been a slow process I really really do appreciate you guys hanging with me on this uh, this project 
And uh, I am so thankful um, and grateful for you guys following me on this uh, journey. And uh, God, I, I would love to keep it going. I'd love to stay here and continue uh, this uh, Creed Rhone. I, so, I have so many IPs and so many different ideas, you guys. Um, and like I said earlier in the stream, I have uh, some guest stars and some, some really cool stuff that I, uh, I think you guys are really gonna like. Um, announcements and stuff like that that I'll be bringing your way down the line so art where's your better half so mighty geek um, if you want to go back for a more detailed um, Taylor is um, she's moving I don't know if it's moving on is the right word but uh, California is very expensive and we we both live in California and she kind of wants to um, be out on her own she wants some independence so uh, I think she found a place in California that's a, um, a less expensive place to live apartment-wise. And so she's going to move out there. So she's not going to be as close to the to Hack Shack Studios as she once was. So uh, we're trying to work out the details, but um, the day-to-day -day stuff will change, like the YouTube um, streaming and some of the other stuff and, and you know I almost said it's gonna be tougher but I think it's just going to be different because we had a talk the other day and she really wants to stay for issue two of black and white and quite frankly um, if we could work it out I would I would love it to happen because uh, her voice and my voice on this book I think is 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 amazing and I would like to keep that going and um, so we're going to see how much we can do from long distance so it's kind of up in the air but i think it's all good you know and and you know if she's if she's going to be happier you know uh, in this other place and kind of have an independence then you know i don't, I don't want to stand in her way um she's a great person i've known her for almost like eight years or so so we were uh, we were inking books for uh dc together uh, way back when so um, and she's very talented and uh, I hope that everything works out I'm pretty sure it will um, she seems fairly open to it and uh, any kiss corner in the near future yeah I I actually have another member that I've been there's so much you guys I wish I could say everything um, yeah so Ray through through Lou if you really uh, like the uh, the kiss corner stuff I have plans for that and I have a new fourth member I mean if Taylor still wants to be involved um, I'm totally open to all this stuff but uh, you know I have been talking to another another person that I think you guys will like too um, and so that's that let me see if I can wrap this up if you remember right originally unrestored <laughs> um, did you create uh, co-create any characters for Marvel uh, yes I did uncanny Kodiak and I'm so hoping that uh, when they tell cable um, the X-Men character cable his backstory that they use Fabian uh, Niciesa and my creations because we uh, there's some backstory and there's some uh, backstory characters that uh, we created and I hope that they use those because that would be pretty nifty to see those up on the big screen. And there's an X-Men character, a villain, that uh, Fabian and I created as well. And his name was um, Hazard. Not Havoc, Hazard. And um, I think in issue 12 and 13 of X-Men, um, he's in that book. And we've had some licensing that Marvel's done with the character, like trading cards and things like that, but not a whole lot. But that would be cool, too, to see that character used um, in a movie somewhere or, or something. That would be cool. I uh, would love to see Tomasi or Gleason on the stream. I love both of those guys. Um, Pete Tomasi, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the best uh, writers that DC Comics has right now. As far as my taste and sensibility, um, that guy's amazing. Uh, the New 52, uh, I've talked about this on another stream, uh, some of his Batman and, uh, and different Batman family books uh, were nothing short of amazing. Uh, he managed to make me care for, um, you know, Damien um, Wayne, which uh, before that I, I thought he was just a cash grab, 
but he managed to bring some heart to that character and some some actually some meaning uh, to the character and to the relationship of uh, of Bruce Wayne. I could go off on a tangent because I have a I have a Robin I have a Robin a Damien story. I maybe I can I got ten minutes. I, I told myself I'd do an hour, so um, it's gonna be a tangent. But the tangents are the best thing, uh, the best part of life, are tangents. So uh, my uh, my Damien uh, Wayne story, the Robin story, is I find Robin very very boring. Um, I don't like the character. I don't like Batgirl either. Um, to be honest. Uh, I like Batman when he's on his own as the Dark Knight detective. Um, very gadgety. I still like kind of the 60s gadgets. I like all that stuff. But but kind of, you know, James Bond with, well, I think James Bond in the day had a lot of gadgets too. But uh, bat gadgets. Um, and so um, the idea is if you're stuck with Damien, I think that character, since he is blood to Bruce Wayne, that he would be a direct heir to the Wayne fortune um, in a way that maybe even Dick Grayson isn't. And um, I think it would be a little tut- it would be a little weird to it would be a little bit of an obstacle to write um, uh, Dick Grayson and how he feels about what I'm going to tell you guys. But I think it could work because I, I my version of Dick Grayson, he's a very, very centered guy. He he understands Bruce in a way that nobody else in the world understands. And I think he's fairly forgiving and he knows that uh you know, he's old enough now that he knows and understands how things all worked out, um, and they worked out for the better, and that uh Bruce Wayne and Batman are good guys. Um and I always say that because I do believe that they're kind of separate people in a way. So the idea is that um, I th- I would love to see that Damien, instead of trying to be like the next Batman, because we already have Dick Grayson, I think he's more suited to be the next Batman. But what if you had Dick Grayson becomes the next Batman? Just as far as a legacy idea, um, he becomes the next Batman. Um, and Damien becomes the next Bruce Wayne. Um, he becomes uh, Thomas Wayne. So one of the things is Batman always, or Bruce Wayne, seemed like he didn't have a lot of interest in the Wayne, you know, foundation and the the Wayne Enterprises and all the business side. So what if Damien just goes up to Bruce and says, "I don't want to be Robin. I think this is this is nowhere. Um, I don't want to do this anymore. I think I could do I could do more good running your company." And then, you know, then, of course, there would be there would be some tension there and things. But then maybe, you know, he just starts going to business school. Damien does. And he starts learning things and starts hanging around at Wayne Tech and uh, Wayne Enterprises. And he starts basically his lineage and his his way of taking over um, the legacy of Batman and, you know, and the Waynes is to become a businessman. So then in the future, if you did like a future 10 story or whatever, Damien would be running um, the corporation and also could be in a lot of ways helping Batman develop stuff in a way that, you know, they had to create that other character, um, Lucius. So, you know, maybe, you know, he does stuff like that and and turns Wayne, the Wayne Foundation into or the Wayne Wayne Enterprises into a company that it was never before. So I don't really have where the stories could go from there. But I just think he's a more interesting character as a businessman than as what is he going to be the next Batman? You know, was he going to be the next Ra's al Ghul or, you know, I don't I don't know, you know, where he would go from there. Um, but we've seen stuff like that before. And uh, just as a side note, I always thought Batgirl, Barbara Gordon, was more interesting as Oracle than she ever was as Batgirl. Because I thought as far as um, supporting Batman, fighting crime in Gotham City, I thought she did she did way, way more good. And I thought she fit into the team better than just a female Batman. And not that that's bad, because I'm not saying it's bad, but it's just like personally... Um, I liked her as Oracle because I thought also as far as diversity and things like that, and you know how they're you know trying to play that card a lot, um, that they already had a character that was way diverse beyond you know anything that they could create now. They already had that, so um, 
so I like those kind of ideas where they support Batman, but not necessarily support Batman is as in they're another Batman. You know what I mean? There's only one Batman. Um, I think that kind of support uh, would work and be very cool. And also just as a legacy character, Damien could do or be like like Thomas Wayne. Like he could almost be um, like like Batman's, uh, like Bruce Wayne's father was and and continue the legacy that way and tell stories that would be interesting about about him and the business world and how he basically fights the good fight as far as being a business guy in Gotham City and his trials and tribulations as as an aside not necessarily like he gets his own book but he's just it's an accompanying character that's completely different than Batman. You know, they, they don't necessarily go out on missions. And you can still have him go out every once in a while. You could have him put on the Robin suit or whatever and go help out when needed. But not all the time. So, anyways, that's my two cents. We have five. We're five to eight. I told myself a good hour. Somehow, with your help, you guys, I've been able to, uh, to get through this. And uh, stay tuned because I have more announcements and more things planned. But in the meantime, I do have a uh, Chrono Mechanics page, an Indiegogo page, where you can go to. I don't know how to do links, you guys. Um, but if is, I guess I have to give wrenches and stuff. I don't know if anybody can do a link or if anybody can find the Chrono Mechanics link. I have a sign up page that if you sign up now you'll be eligible for a lot of exclusives and fun things that uh, only the the advanced people that sign up now will have access to and that's going to be fun and um, so Chrono Mechanics is going to be my next campaign I am hoping hoping to have it you know up and going by the end of the summer but a lot's going to depend on you know how quickly I can get into um, Yvonne Craig. Yeah, um, <laughs> that suit was kind of cool, though. Um, uh, how soon I can get into fulfillment on Black and White? Because I want you guys to start getting that book before I go into um, the Chrono Mechanics, uh, you know, Indiegogo campaign. Because I want you to know that um, I'm going to keep my word. I am keeping my word, and and I want you to see the quality of this book. So then, um, when you guys start seeing the Indiegogo Chrono Mechanics Indiegogo, uh, you'll have a little bit more confidence. Although I think you pretty much know what I could do. I've been drawing and inking comics for 35 years, but um, but not really in this capacity. I've had two Kickstarters that I have fulfilled, but this thing is this is pretty monumental. Um, Black and White has been um, a pretty big project for myself, so I want to make sure I can get into your hands and that you um, that you guys like it and enjoy it, and that you'll come over and hopefully support um, me on the Chrono Mechanics campaign. Which uh, I also I want you guys to see this because there's multiple sides like to to um, to me creatively, so. Chrono Mechanics, if you guys haven't seen any of these images, and I'll start posting them um, in the next month or so to you know give you guys a little bit of a taste of what it is um, and what it looks like. Um, excuse me. Uh, is um, is this, the style is completely different. I, I kind of uh, hearken it to it's, it's like Hanna-Barbera. In the best way, I like. I think some of the Hanna Barbera designs are great. Um, the animation maybe not be all that strong, but the design work I think on a lot of those characters uh, that Hanna Barbera did were very very strong, and um, like meets Mobius because I always liked. Uh, I like the French comic artists, and I'm really influenced by Mobius's line work. Well, his drawing period but a lot of his line work. So what I did is kind of took uh, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon style and I merged it with like a Mobius rendering style. So it's I, I, I'm very proud of it. I think it came out very, very cool, but it's nothing like black and white. So black and white is pretty serious, you know, straightforward, you know, mainstream 
kind of uh, you know uh, look to it. But Chrono Mechanics is completely is completely unique. I think it's it's completely unique unto itself, the style and everything. So I will be updating you and keeping you um, in the loop as far as the development on that program uh, uh, IP uh, that um, and then black and white as well. So I'll keep you guys in the loop and uh, loop and let you know. I can give me a rent. I can give me a wrench. Yeah, if you want a wrench. Hey, Arthur Brown, if you if you can do that, I don't know how, but if you can do that, um, put a link to the Chrono um, the Chrono sign up site. That would be greatly appreciated. This is all stuff I'm going to be working and learning on the fly, you guys. So um, once again, just like you're putting the black and white, uh, you know, Indiegogo together, just uh, doing these live streams and things are all going to be uh like work in progress i look at you know the advanced age that i am i'm still a work in progress you guys i'm still learning new tricks so this old dog um is not uh it's not done yet don't count me out so um but damien did have an interesting scene with uh under i got what what books are those? I don't I don't know what those books are. The JT Kroll books. I gotta check those out then. Um yeah, I haven't I haven't been to the comic shop in a year. So if that's fairly recent, I haven't seen that. Uh it was uh Bruce uh, was missing. Oh oh wait. Wait a minute. Was that the Batman Robin stuff where um Bru where uh, Dick became Batman? Is that the stuff? Cause I think um wasn't Tomasi writing some of that? <laughs> You're a spring chicken. Back, back. Yeah, I'm a spring chicken. So uh, the uh, wrenches can be placed. Can place links. Oh, okay. I'll figure out how to do that so I can I can get you guys uh, wrenches and you can help me out in the chat. Cause that'd be greatly appreciated, putting links and the like. I think I've tried to put links in just the... Um, you know where you can type in stuff but i don't think the links are active i don't think they work that way so uh anyways you guys thank you so much for staying tuned and keeping me Ooh, there's a bunch of activity here um keeping me going for the last hour uh yes around that time oh cool yeah i'll i think i have some i was still getting the dc mailers uh they used to give uh me all the books monthly for free so i think i still have a stack of them somewhere I'll go through those in my spare time. So Archie Bear highlights Arthur's name. Give him modern uh, status. Then he can post a link. Okay. So how do I highlight um, his name? Do I just kind of right click? No. I'm probably going to screw everything up. Okay, there's little dots here. A report, remove, um, hide users. Add, is it the add moderator? Is that the button I push um, to get Arthur Brown as a mod? So, you know what? I can just push this and see what happens. Boom, I pushed it. So, um, Arthur Brown on Caddy uh, is now... Oh, I didn't get... It popped up really quick. So, I think uh, Arthur um, Uncanny Kodiak um, check to see if you are... Yeah, I can't find it on Indiegogo. Is it posted yet? Oh, yeah, it is um go to my twitter i think let me i'm gonna click out here i'm gonna go to my twitter i think i posted um on my twitter so there should be a link on my twitter yeah it's from july 28th i'll be the first to sign up for my next indiegogo campaign chrono mechanics here's the link so yeah the link is in my um on my twitter so i think and it, you know what you know what um Arthur, I think it's on my Facebook too. So you and I are Facebook buddies. So I think if you go, if you go back, it's probably a couple of days ago. Yeah, there it is. Uh, July 28th. It's just like two posts down on my Facebook. There's a link there as well. So um, if you're having a hard time seeing it, maybe you can find them there. Arthur Brown, okay. Yes have the <laughs> I have the power oh there it is 
Oh my gosh, you guys are so friggity cool. Friggity fraggity cool. That is so cool. Yeah, so um, the uncanny Kodiak has uh, has been given the power. He has a wrench now. So watch out, man. He's going to use and abuse the power. Uh, he's a good guy. He's not going to do that. So um, uh, Arthur Brown just put in the Indiegogo link. So sign up there, you guys, please. And... Um, and uh, I'm going to be announcing soon what those exclusives and all those other goodies are are um, are going to be. And uh, like I said, you guys, I, I have so many things going on. It's uh, it's hard because you got to kind of prioritize how you do things based on uh, the furthest thing in the distance to the newest thing that you have to do um, that minute, that hour, that day. So um, prioritizing some of this stuff is uh, slow going, but, um, but Arthur and myself have been working on a Chrono Mechanics related thing. I think it's a little too early to um, let you guys know, but it's pretty killer. And um, I'm partnering with a couple other CGers, comic skaters, as far as um, partnering on black and white as well. So this is going to be a... It's going to be a Comics Gate Jam Fest, this new Chrono Mechanics book. So um, we have that. Uh, like I said, there's a link now in the, um, the chat. Thank you, Arthur. And click that and sign up for the new uh, Chrono Mechanics um, pre-launch page. And you'll get all the exclusive goodies, which we have um, some cool ideas. And I'll be announcing those uh, relatively soon. So um, we're a little after eight. Somehow the hour has flown by. Thank you guys so very, very much for tuning in. Uh, this has been a blast. It really has. I, I thought this was going to hurt me really, really bad. Um, but you guys have made this absolutely um, a joy. I've had a good time. And like I said, uh, this next couple months are going to be really uh very cool a lot of cool things planned so let me see if i can get out of here so end stream is this big red button next to my smiley face so i'm going to make sure if i really want to do this if i really want to say goodbye to you guys um okay so everybody out there thank you so much for hanging out um thanks for making this easy on me and i'll be doing this soon again and have a good evening guys take care